Good morning. It's Laura. Thanks for joining me. We're just going to have a little walk around the garden today and see what's up. Give some updates on things. So let's just get started. The pumpkins are starting to take over the pumpkin tunnel. Mostly just in this section. Um, you guys know I did not mark anything, of course. <laughs> but I guess I put all the same kind over here. And then I have some watermelons over here that are a lot slower going. Um, I need to check the tag because at first I was like, oh my gosh, did I get like a bush type instead of a vining type? But I cut some of this um, blue spice basil. I cut this back a little bit so that they would get a little bit more sun. And it, they do seem to be starting to climb now so i think they're gonna grow really fast now that it's getting super hot and i have a bunch of females female flowers already i'm super excited because they never come this early typically they put out a lot of male flowers before they shoot out any females but um I don't know, maybe because I've been fertilizing them this year. I don't think I ever did that in the past. Maybe just like once a month or something. I'm doing it once a week now. So these are looking great. Look at this. I wish it would focus. <laughs> focus. There we go. This is a female flower. The, the way you can tell the difference is, see how it looks like it has a little pumpkin at the bottom? Here's another one. Actually, I can see some little bug droppings. And then this would be a male. See, there's, uh, you have your, this will turn into a flower, but there's nothing at the base of it, as opposed to this one here. You know what, maybe I should swing around the other side because it does not want to focus. Okay, this is better. So this one here is a female. And the way you can tell is because the bottom looks like a little pumpkin. This is the one that needs to be pollinated by a male flower. So pumpkins only open for one day. So when they're open, I will probably just do it myself because I, I, I trust the bees, but... <laughs> I like to be sure. So when they open, I will hand pollinate it with a male flower. And I'll share that all with you when it happens. <laughs> but it's just very exciting because they don't usually come on this early. At first I wondered if I should actually cut them off and continue to encourage the vine to vine. But I looked on the internet <laughs> and it says like don't cut off the early females because you want them to ripen as long as possible so I have pinched off some of the early male flowers just to encourage the vine to grow focus its energy on on vining because you know I built this tunnel <laughs> I want it to be covered in vines but at this point, I'm going to need those males to pollinate the females. So, no more of that. So, you guys know I'm really bad at labeling my plants. You can see how incredibly organized my plant labels are. <laughs> my plant tags. Just literally, this is it. So, my brother got these for me for Christmas, I think. It's July. <laughs> I haven't done anything with them yet, but I am determined. So I think what I'm going to do is the ones that I forget a lot, like more of the, probably like the shrubs, I'm going to make plant markers for them. So like, for example, I have a few YGLAs that look similar. I'm going to make a tag for this. I honestly do not know which one is which right now, but I think once they are in bloom, which obviously already happened. They're a spring bloomer. 
but if I can identify it through the season, I will put the tag out. Otherwise, I'll just save it until I do know which plant is which. The same thing with um, a lot of the hydrangeas, like the panicle ones that I have out front. I have shuffled them around so many times. One's a vanilla strawberry. One is a, um, what do you call it, a quick fire. And then I have one in the back I'm going to show to you guys. I really need your help to identify because I can't find the tag. I can't find the label for it. And it, I can't figure it out. Help me. This is the plant in question. Um, it's blooming already. It's a white one. It's blooming already. So ahead of most of the other white blooming hydrangeas. And I don't know what type this is. I almost thought it was a viburnum, but it's, I think, blooming too late for it to be a viburnum. Look at these mother effers. I'm going to kill them in just a second. You guys need to die. So if anyone knows what this is, please help me. <laughs> Does anyone else grow moon vine? Because this is my first time growing it and it is doing great. It's thriving. But from what I hear, it blooms at night. So, and I am an, I'm an early, <laughs> an early go to better. I go to bed early. Okay. So even if it was blooming, I don't know if I would know. When do they typically bloom? If you know, let me know in the comments. I've got one here and then another one right there. You might have seen this just a few minutes ago when I was messing with the hose, but I did get the giant cauldron from at home. I couldn't pass it up. It's amazing, but I think I'm going to wait to replace this one because it's just so like full and established right now. I don't really want to mess with it. So I think I'm just going to hang on to my new cauldron until like the fall after first frost and change it out after that. That's the plan. But I am really glad that I picked it up because they only had, I think this was the last one. If you don't buy your Halloween stuff in June and July, they're not going to have anything left. So if you're one of those people that gets mad that stuff is out super early, you know, uh, I don't know what to tell you about that, but we celebrate spooky year round, so it should be out year round, in my opinion. <laughs> I did want to share this with you guys, because if you remember when I went to that plant sale, I picked up a couple fuchsias that were different from the ones you typically see. That bright pink, and these are so pretty. It's blooming. <laughs> this one's called, it's called a Sarah something. I, I have to look it up and put it on the screen, but I am so happy. I love it. So pretty. I have an interesting problem with my spooky tree that I did not anticipate. You know, I knew it would get weathered and such, and I plan on keeping it up, but there have been woodpeckers pecking at the branches looking for bugs. So they're destroying it <laughs> slowly. I'm hoping that once the pumpkin vine really starts taking over that maybe they'll F off because I mean look what they're doing it's not good it's not good but it is starting to finally climb up it's kind of winding around the back there exciting things this area over here could do with a lot more weeding. I'll probably go in and weed some of this. 
Um, this is a tricky spot, you guys. I don't know if it's mine. Like, technically, I think it is, but m my neighbor, when we moved in here 10 years ago, we didn't have it surveyed or anything. Um, so you can see how it's kind of sloped. Like, these big trees belong to my neighbor, and then it slopes down. So I kind of always just assumed that our property line was where the slope is, like at the bottom of the slope. But one day, <laughs> Um, I saw my neighbor, like in my, what I thought was my yard, planting these um, rows of Sharon's. There's one here, one here. She really likes those. That's fine. I didn't know what was going on. And honestly, I have severe social anxiety, so I never really asked her about it. But um, whenever we talk about like this, this area, it seems like it's hers <laughs> so like um so mine would kind of stop where the mulch stops but we've discussed it and she even she has said that she doesn't know exactly where the property line is I really don't like these rows of Sharon and I and I don't mind tending to all this stuff because she's older my neighbor is older um and she can't do it so I don't mind it but I just would like some clarity on where the property line is. I think we may have to get someone to come in and do a survey or whatever. I don't know how, how that works. I love my neighbor, she's the nicest lady. She's like my favorite neighbor that I've ever had. But I just, uh, I just don't know what's going on right here. There's the bunny in my neighbor's yard eating his grass, I'm sure he's gonna love that. He has a very well manicured lawn. Uh, I figured out why she's not running away from me when I get close to her. It's because usually it's over here and she has babies right over in this area here. So that's exciting. You guys see these little white like butterfly things? I have a lot of these this year. I think these are like those cabbage moths. And I don't I don't think that's good. We got a lot of pests, you guys. But they don't seem to be causing any trouble yet. I just noticed that there are a lot of them this year. So thanks for joining me today. Um I hope you will subscribe if you're new. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers. I'm at like 815 right now. I did just submit a video to Janie's channel. Um, I'm sure you guys probably watch her on Dig Plant Water Repeat. She's doing another showcase, Show Me Your Gardens by Zone. So I submitted a video for that. I hope I get picked. <laughs> Fingers crossed, obviously. Um, She's the best. <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys for joining me. Subscribe if you're new. Leave me a comment. Let me know how your garden is looking. I, I would love to hear about all your guys' gardens. And what zone you are in. Let's chat. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. I will see you all next time. Bye.